Can you get a successful hatch with a cheap incubator? Welcome back to Bok Bok Bouquet. I'm Kelly and if you're new here, make sure you subscribe so you can keep up with our weekly uploads. Today we're going to be talking about the Little Giant Still Air Incubator. So it all started as we bought some expensive rare hatching eggs on eBay, a breed that we've been wanting for a long time that we can't find anywhere. And the ad was for 14 plus eggs, they ended up sending 30. Well, we only had one broody hen, so we ran to our neighborhood tractor supply, and this was valued at about $50. So we took it home. Our eggs were getting ready to put in the incubator, and we opened up this box, and we were a little underwhelmed that it was made of styrofoam. <laughs> like, it's just a cooler. It looks like we could have made it, but, you know, like, Little Giant, that's a reputable brand. All my chicken waterers are from this company it's a huge chicken company so okay here we go what I ended up doing and something that I think everybody should really do is whenever you're gonna take on a new task a hobby anything in life do your research and that's what I'm here to help you with today I did the research so I'm gonna tell you how I got a successful hatch and got my expensive rare hatching eggs to hatch in this cheap incubator because it took some quirking to work so first while well, my eggs are preparing to be incubated and if you want to see that video what to expect when you receive hatching eggs in the mail you can click right up here or it'll be in the description so my eggs were preparing to be incubated and I ended up turning this on getting it up to heat and I filled let's open it I filled the water troughs, there's a reservoirs in here with water to get some humidity in there. This is just the regular stock version. You can buy optional accessories sold separately, an egg turner, a forced air fan kit. Okay, so I didn't buy any of those things and so I was the egg turner and um, because I didn't have the forced air fan kit because this was just when you don't have a fan going, you're going to have different pockets of heat. So heat rises. So the bottom of the incubator is going to be the lowest temperature and the top of the incubator is going to be the highest temperature. I'm getting ahead of myself. Now let me tell you what. So in the manual, it tells you to have it at 103.5 degrees and because that's what they say is... Um, what they have known to be a good temperature for incubating eggs. So if you have incubated eggs before, you know that they're supposed to be anywhere from 97 to like not over 103 degrees. 97 to 102 degrees is a safe range to incubate eggs. So the sweet spot is 99.9, .9, 100 degrees even. Well, they say if you run this at 103.5, that that'll be about there. Don't trust what this says. This thermometer is wrong. It's reading what's up here. So what I did is I went off of three thermometers. I went off of the thermometer that it had. I went and bought this little giant thermometer and I just had it at the base here. And so I had my eggs in here and I would actually just lay it on top of the eggs. So the eggs were here and I would just lay it on top of the eggs. So I had this laying in here. I got on Amazon this little external thermometer, digital one. Where is it? Okay, see there's a little thing here. I actually just had the little receptor in here and then out I could read and it also has a humidity reading here. So moral of the story with this incubator is do not trust what it says. I went off of three thermometer readings. So I would go off of what this one and what this one was saying. And I would have to, so this is, a, this is an incubator if you're working from home or if you're home a lot, not one if you have a job and you can't maintain it because sometimes if it got cooler at night, I would raise the temperature. There was one point we got a cold snap and I had it at 108 degrees, which is like hard boiled eggs. But don't believe what it says. This says it was 99 degrees. So when you plug it in, right here it'll say 
it'll have a picture of a chick and it'll say ready hatching okay or it'll say heater on and to set it you hold the set button and then you can raise the temp or you can lower it here and then you hold set to set the temperature and then it also shows you your humidity reading right there so you want to have this running before you put your eggs in here. Make sure that you're bringing it up to the temperature and humidity you need. And there's these little plugs it comes with. Well, eggs need oxygen while they're incubating. So while they're incubating, remove one plug. And during the entire time of incubation, make sure you have that plug open because they're going to need oxygen. And Make sure you have your other thermometers going and that you're running it at 99 degrees. And because I didn't buy the egg turner, every hour I turned the eggs. So what I did is I drew an X on one side of the egg with a pencil. Don't use markers because that can be toxic to the chick. So an X on one side of the pencil, a zero on the other side, and so I would flip the egg on the X side and then the next um, hour I'd flip it on the O side and I actually kept a calendar where every other night they slept on a different side so I had X nights and O nights and the reason why you turn your eggs so often is a mother hen actually turns them like up to 50 times a day so once every hour they should do it at least three to six times a day but I did it every hour just because I have the time because I'm working from home and if you have a better incubator or if you want to buy the egg turner attachment accessory sold separately then you won't have to do that part but this is how I hatch these expensive eggs with the cheapest incubator possible so the first week my humidity stayed at about 60% with the troughs full of water and I maintain the temperature at 99.9 .9 degrees because I've seen lots of people say they could not get a successful hatch or even got deformed chicks because they ran their temperature too low. So make sure you take the time, buy a reliable thermometer, know what the real temperature is, do not trust this one. Same with the humidity. I didn't trust what it said at all. I went off of what this one. In this time period, about six days in, we candled the eggs to see if they were developing or if they were unfertile. So we removed the ones that weren't developing that ended up not being fertile and kept the good eggs. Week two, again, plugs out, lots of oxygen, so some of the humidity is releasing. My humidity dropped to 30%. It's week two. Humidity being high isn't as necessary, so I let week two ride out at that. Still turning the eggs every hour. During the process, we continued to candle the eggs to make sure they were still developing. So this one seems to have started developing, but maybe died early on. As you can see, there's no blood vessels forming, no spider web of veins, nothing. Now here you can see a baby that's alive in there. Look, you can see it moving around. You see the veins forming. Baby! So this one is a week and a half developed. You can see it in there, moving around. How cool is that? One of the biggest joys in life is doing a little ultrasound on an egg. Week three. Still maintaining 99.9 .9 degrees. I could not get the humidity to rise up with the water troughs. I wanted for my hatch my hatch to at least be at like 75% humidity. The last three days, because a chick takes 21 days to hatch, so they say on day 18 is lockdown. You do not want to remove the lid of your incubator because you do not want precious humidity to come out that you can't raise it because the humidity is important because if the chick starts to pip and break through the shell, it has the egg has that membrane and the humidity keeps it wet so the chick is able to break through easier and if the humidity drops they can happen what they let people call shrink wrapping well that layer can get hard and then the chick can't break through and it can die so that's why they call it lockdown they say not to open well if you're able to maintain your humidity you can open it you just got to make sure your humidity doesn't drop so the chick doesn't get shrink wrapped. With this incubator, I was not able to get the humidity to where it needed to be. So when I was in lockdown, what I ended up doing, again, I had to like rig up this thing to make it work. Constantly checking the temperature. Lockdown. No more flipping the eggs. It's supposed to be locked down. You just let it sit. I ended up getting some paper towels, some bounty paper towels 
filled them with hot water and I ended up lining the edge of the incubator around the eggs. I even kind of like twisted one and put it in the water so it would wick it so it would constantly stay wet. I was able to get my humidity up to like 80% and the eggs started hatching and then as they would hatch the humidity would rise a lot because the egg coming out and hatching, the chick coming out, the yolk sac, the wet chick would make the humidity rise a lot so as the chicks would hatch I was able to remove them and put them in my brooder because my humidity was at a fine level. I actually had to remove some paper towels because at some points my humidity was getting so high like I didn't want them to get like they were never gonna dry like like I had no problem with with humidity once I added wet paper towels. You want to remove the second plug it comes with so now both plugs are open. As much oxygen as possible is getting into the incubator for hatch and get ready for the hatching. Cutest thing ever, through these little windows, seeing all your little babies hatching. And so, while they're, when they first hatch, they're wet, they're crawling around, they don't walk very well. You can leave them in there to dry out. Make sure you don't let your humidity drop, so don't be opening it too much, because if your humidity drops, that's bad. But if you have really high humidity, like I did, I had so many hatching at once, they were playing football with the eggs, it was a disaster. I ended up taking them out, putting them in the brooder to dry off, it was fine, my humidity stayed high. That's the important part of lockdown, is maintain your humidity level. That's why they call it lockdown. So now a few weeks later, here are the Tollbun Frizzle Polishes we hatched. Out of 14 eggs, we were successfully able to hatch 12 of them, and we're having such a blast raising them. So if you like this video, go ahead and give us a like. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. We read our mail, so we'll be happy to answer them. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. We'll see you next time.